Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper. And I'm here with a new podcast and I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be discussing communications for preppers and everybody else that's interested. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the podcast. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the need for amateur radio operators in the prepping community. In our community, there is a need for licensed amateur radio operators. These are the people who have taken the time to study and pass the FCC exam, whether technician or beyond. In a grid-down situation, they will be the ones who have the skill set to get communication set up for both local and long range. And yes, Technicians have voice privileges on 10 meter, but more on that later. I say this not to be an elitist, far from it. I'm encouraging my fellow preppers who are interested in comms to join the ranks of amateur radio operators here in the U.S. There are over 700,000 amateur radio ops in the U.S. alone, and each one of them has the skills to communicate in an SHTF situation. Because they have this skill set and they've been practicing with their gear just as preppers should practice with every aspect of their preps. Let me put it to you this way. As a prepper you would not pick up a first aid kit and suddenly be an expert with its many uses, would you? No. You would at the very least take a first aid class to gain the knowledge and you would practice with these skills until you're confident in assisting someone who was hurt. It's the same with communications. These are not plug and play. It does take some skill to program the radio. Yes, there are uh, computer programs like Chirp and RT systems, and it's a lot easier to, com- to program the radios with a computer. But what if you're not near a computer? Can you program your amateur radio on the go out in the field? Could you build an antenna for the correct frequency that you're using? The licensed amateur radio knows all of this and more. Please understand I'm not trying to be an elitist. I'm encouraging preppers who are communication minded to study for the technician's test. In fact, I'm encouraging everyone who has a mind for communications to become an amateur radio operator because it's a great hobby and a service to the community. Amateur radio ops often volunteer to assist with communications if a place is without communication due to a tornado or a hurricane, such as Puerto Rico when Hurricane Maria devastated the northeastern Caribbean in 2017. Many ham radio operators went to Puerto Rico and assisted getting their comm systems back up on their own dime. Why? Because they have the skills and there was a need for them to be of service. It's not very difficult to get your amateur radio license. It just takes some determination to actually study for the test, then commit to taking the test when you're ready. There are three levels of license in the amateur radio and I'm going to explain each one after a short break. I'd like to give a shout out to Metro Atlanta Hams for the idea of hashtag 1000 new hams. We're trying to get people to join our ranks, so 
go out and take the test and become one of the new hashtag 1000 new hams. Welcome back. Now I'd like to go over the three levels of FCC license for amateur radio. The first is technician. This is your entry level. To be granted a license from the FCC, you must pass a 35 question multiple choice test with a score of at least 74. When you passed, you have to have your call sign assigned to you by the FCC, and this can take up to two weeks. The fee to take the test is now $35. It sounds like a lot, but a license is good for 10 years, so it breaks down to about $3.50 per year. That's less than a cup of coffee anymore. <clears throat> I stated earlier that technicians have voice privileges on 10 meter, and they do. The frequency range is 28.300 megahertz to 28.500 megahertz. This opens up at least intercontinental comms, if not worldwide, when the conditions are right. While the Morse code requirement has done away with on February 23rd, 2007, it's still a good idea to become pro proficient with CW, as technicians have CW privileges on all of the old nov novice bands in the HF frequencies, and that's all of them. <coughs> Next comes the general class license. You must again pass a 35 question multiple choice test as well as have passed the technician's test. This is the class license that I have right now. General license holders can operate digital modes and SSB phone on the HF bands below 28 megahertz. Generals off also operate the full output power of 1500 watts on most of the HF bands. A general license holder can become a volunteer examiner for technicians, meaning they would be able to give the test. However, the test taker cannot be a friend or family member per regulations. And finally, we have the extra class license. Those who have attained this level operate voice data CW on all HF frequencies set aside solely for the amateur extra class operator. This gives them more room for working long distance communications. The extra class license holder can administer all levels of SCC exams. This is the tippy top of amateur radio. You have to pass a 50 question multiple choice test with a passing score of 74. While not unattainable, it is never, nevertheless daunting if you get test anxiety like I do. I'm studying for this level currently and I'll let you know when I have that goal completed. If you like to operate digitally, we have Amtor. RTTY, PSK, Packet Radio, and a myriad of other digital modes. <clears throat> the list of digital modes is extensive, and while it's not my cup of tea, I have a friend who loves working digital HF. I just can't wrap my mind around the ins and outs of it, and you know what? That's okay. Because my friend doesn't like operating on voice, and I do. And yet we're still friends. 
It's crazy, huh? My point is, there is something for everybody in amateur radio. And you can talk to satellites. You can talk to the International Space Station. You can bounce a signal off the moon. You can work microwave radio. There's a treasure trove of communication adventure in amateur radio. So why not get your license? Who knows? You might just hear me on the airwaves one day. Until then, this is K0MRD, your radio prepper, signing off. You have just listened to the K0MRD Radio Prepper Podcast with your host, K0MRD. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play to catch our next episode. Thanks for taking the time to listen. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, signing off, 7-3.